Tonight, Microsoft is getting into wearables. Another heart bleed is on the scene. And new Beats audio headphones just in time. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 97 for Thursday, May 29th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Full Sail University. Full Sail offers both online and campus degree programs centered on real-world experience in the entertainment, media, and technology industries. For more information, visit fullsail.edu slash TN2. I'm Sarah Lane, and before we get right into the tech feed, uh, we've got a story... Quite breaking, in fact, that former Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer is buying the Los Angeles Clippers for two billion dollars. Some some reports have that number a little bit under that. Uh, LA Times is reporting two billion. We will have more on that tomorrow. But let's get into our actual stories. All right, Forbes is reporting that Microsoft is the latest company to get into the wearables market and plans to offer a sensor-based smartwatch that measures heart rate and syncs with iPhones, Android phones, and Windows phones. Now sources tell Forbes that the device will benefit from optical engineering expertise from Microsoft's Xbox Connect division to continuously measure heart rate through the day and the night with a battery that lasts for about two days. That puts it a about the same as Samsung's Gear Fit. But the more interesting part is the syncing with not only Windows Phone devices, but with iPhones and Android devices as well. Now, Microsoft isn't commenting on this report, but sources say the watch will feature a full-color touchscreen about the size of half a stick of gum. And it's worn on the inside of a wearer's wrist, which would supposedly make it a more private place to view notifications. The heart bleed bug continues to cause problems across the internet. And now a new report from Portuguese security researcher Luis Granjea describes how the bug could now be used over Wi-Fi and allow more attacks that build off that same vulnerability. The new attack has been dubbed Cupid, isn't that sweet, and would perform the same heart bleed procedure but over Wi-Fi instead of the open web and would pull data from enterprise routers or use a malicious router to pull data from Android devices. Now, in each case, the attacker would be able to view snippets of the working memory from that targeted device and potentially expose user credentials, client certificates, private keys. This all sounds pretty familiar. Granjea published a patch to protect against the bug earlier today, but is still urging vendors and administrators to upgrade the, their devices and says, quote, this particular variant of the attack might be slower to close, but it should not be nearly as widespread as the original bug since the universe of vulnerable devices is lower. At least there's some good news. Amazon is expanding its Prime membership perks by adding a library of old and newer music for subscribers to stream on demand. The Prime music service is scheduled to launch sometime this summer and will restrict its catalog to songs and albums that are six months old and older, five music industry sources familiar with the company's plans tell BuzzFeed. Now, Amazon has apparently reached agreements with two of the three major labels, that Sony and Warner. Several independents for the new service are also in following initial talks late last year. Much like the on-demand video option available for Prime members, the Prime Music Service will bundle select songs and albums it's licensed from labels at a discount. Small steps, maybe, but then again, Amazon has 20 million reported Prime members, and after raising the price of Prime to $99 per year from $79 per year, this may ease the pain just a little bit. Okay, which ISP provides the best streaming experience? Google wants you to know. In an effort to get ISPs to ensure HD quality streams without buffering, Google's released a U.S.-focused version of its video quality report, on Tuesday, which lets users check which of their available ISPs deliver the best-looking streams. YouTube, of course. Google released this kind of video quality report for Canadian ISPs back in January. But by including the U.S., the company kind of publicly sides with a company like, say, Netflix, which has been pushing U.S. ISPs for some time to improve their video streaming quality and has its own ISP speed index that ranks streaming performance for customers of various service providers. 
Microsoft and Salesforce.com have announced a strategic partnership that will bring Salesforce's customer relationship management or CRM apps to Windows, Windows Phone, and Office 365. Terms of the deal were not disclosed, but the companies will deliver Salesforce One for Windows and Windows Phone 8.1, and customers can access Salesforce and run their business from their Windows devices. That's handy. A preview is slated for fall of this year with general availability expected sometime in 2015. It's a shift from the CRM competition that Microsoft and Salesforce.com had previously. You might recall back in 2010, Microsoft sued Salesforce for patent infringement, which led to a countersuit and then a settlement between the two later that year. A little later in the show, why law enforcement might want to be more careful when tapping our phones, and it's not for the reason you think. And in a moment, Reed writes, Dan Rowinski will join us to talk about HP's future after Beats Audio. But first, let's take a moment to thank Full Sail University for sponsoring this episode of TN2. Marketers need to know how to use advanced web-based tools, right? They need to know the right techniques to reach audiences and consumers on a digital level. Online marketing elements like web-based channels or search technologies and analytics all drive today's advertising and branding strategies. Well, Full Sail University's online internet marketing master's degree program is designed exactly for these kind of professionals who want to keep pace with marketing technologies. You've got courses like search engine optimization, social media marketing, web metrics analytics, online consumer behavior, Students work on real projects with real clients. They gain experience, they generate results, and they learn from industry experience instructors. Full Sail University's online and campus degree programs focus on real-world education and experience with industry tech, also with workflow. It's a very innovative curriculum. And here's the best part. You can earn your master's degree in 12 months. Along with internet marketing, Full Sail offers a variety of master's degrees in related fields like business intelligence, innovation and entrepreneurship, and new media journalism. If you want to learn more about Full Sail's master degree program in internet marketing or any of their related programs, check out fullsail.edu slash TN and the number two. And we thank Full Sail University for their support of Tech News Tonight. Okay, joining us now is Dan Rowinski, mobile editor over at Read Ride. Hey, Dan. Hey, Sarah. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Okay, so right before the show, I actually noticed, uh, because I was complaining about my crappy headphones that I'm wearing, that a new pair of Beats headphones, the Solo 2s that are replacing the original Beats Solos, are going on sale this summer for 200 bucks. I guess that's pretty good timing, considering that now Apple can take credit for them if they're great. Uh, well, that's the question. Uh, I think the big que the, the big question with the Beats headphones is everybody says they're only okay. So yeah, exactly. They're they're heavy on bass. Um, they've got yeah, you know, a variety of colors. They're not cheap though, and yeah, I mean they they don't necessarily have the best reputation in the business. Eddie Q and Jimmy Iovine. I guess we're gonna go with Iovine. There was some question on how you uh, pronounce that last name before the show. They uh, were on stage at the Code Conference last night. And, you know, they said, listen, we bought Beats for Talent, for headphones, and, of course, that music streaming service. And Eddie Q said something kind of crazy. He said the current product lineup is the best in his 25 years with the company. How much do you think Beats fits into that? I know that that's just kind of hyperbole, but, I mean, that's a pretty strong statement. Uh, it is a strong statement. It actually makes you excited to see what Apple has in their sleeves this year. But, honestly, I don't. I'm not sure that Beats fits into that at all quite yet. Uh, if they really had, you know, a product coming out, say, in the next couple months, either with the iPhone or iPad or even a WWDC next week, you know, they I, they might have made a little noise on the, sort of the big stage at Code Conference. So this is a brand new acquisition. It still has to go through sort of the, the final regulation approvals. And, um, you know, it'll be very interesting to see what comes out of that, say, later this year or maybe even next year. But, uh, you know, Beats is still sort of a new curiosity, I think, for for Apple. And especially us, you know, we're all waiting with bated breath. It's like, what are they going to do with Dre? What are they going to do with Jimmy? Right, exactly. You know, Eddie Q didn't come out and say, hey, listen, iTunes isn't working for us anymore. But he did say music is dying. He also pointed to the number of new releases on iTunes being the smallest this year, 
than they have in many years. Now, now, when asked, Jimmy Iovine says, no, I'm not going to start an internal label at Apple. I'm retired. I used to be a music producer. So, okay, if that's not what they're going for, how does Apple plus Beats help the record industry? See, that's the big question. I mean, you have to look at, what, 2001, 2002, and Apple with iTunes has actually been the harbin harbinger of sort of the fall of the record industry. It started with Napster iTunes, downloadable music, uh, now streaming music. Um, but the thing is, what Apple got with Beats and uh, Beats and Dre and Jimmy Iovine is they've got an industry insider now. Um, so if there's any one person that connect those two worlds and the company that has the most resources of any tech company in the world, you think it would be a partnership between somebody like Jimmy Iovine and, and Apple. Uh, how that's going to take shape, and whether they can actually get consumers to to get on board uh, to pay for music and then feed back to the artists and record companies, I think is sort of a big question with no clear answer right now. You know, it, it reminds me of HTC invested three hundred million in Beats uh, some time back, sold back their shares for two sixty five million, took a loss. They would have made a lot of money on this Apple deal had they still been in the game. But Ivan says there was a culture clash between the two companies. Why do you think that was? I mean, what 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 does HTC what did HTC not see that Apple saw, or is HTC smart to pass on it? Actually, I think this has a lot more to do with HTC than it has to do with Beats or Apple. Uh, HTC is a company that has was big in you know the Android smartphones in 2000, 2011, 2012, and then Samsung came along and just ate their lunch. Uh, and now HTC struggles to gain any volume, and they've been posting their first quarterly losses uh, in the last co in the last you know, several quarters that they've basically ever seen. So uh, this was more, I think, uh, something to do with HTC's problems than the value of Beats, because at the time, you know, it was last year, uh, Beats wasn't really all that seen as you know, interesting headphones, but uh, and a burgeoning you know brand new streaming service, but. It wasn't really anything special except for having the, the Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre connection. So, you, you know, speaking of connection, HP uh, has announced that it will be allowed to continue Beats audio products uh, through the rest of this year, through 2014, and then allowed to sell those products with Beats audio logos and technology through the end of 2015. And the company also says we've got an aggressive lineup of new products with Beats branding through this year, which is, you know, they've obviously been working on it already. The interesting thing is Beats technology is included in about up to 20% of devices that are sold by HP currently. Do you think they want to milk the Beats brand as long as possible now that it's at least elevated or at least has gotten more clout because a company like Apple wanted them? I mean, if you're a company like HP that's been struggling for a couple of years now, wouldn't you grasp at anything that could possibly help you? Um, and th there's always moving parts here. Are there contractual obligations? Are there, um, you know, products already in the pipeline that have Beats uh, branding and integration in it? Right. Um, so it really doesn't hurt Apple to let HP continue. And actually, uh, phones like here, like the HTC One M, I mean, it still come with. Uh, you know, Beats, the Beats music app already installed. So, uh, and that's another thing, the cross-platform, Apple has said they're not going to, uh, Beats will be on Android, Beats will be a Windows phone. So uh, sort of an interesting dynamic that they're setting up and Apple letting other people use the Beats brand because that's part of what they bought. They bought the Beats brand. Um, and a company like HP, sure, yeah, milk that for what it's worth. Do you think the novelty of, oh, Dr. Dre might walk out at WWDC, once that kind of wears off, do you think Apple's going to sell a lot of Beats headphones? You know, so you said it right at the beginning, and this is about talent, the streaming app, and the headphones. Now, I think of all those things, the talent is probably the, what they want because they've got in Jimmy Iovine um, a very good businessman. I mean, this guy has built himself up from almost, you know, coming off the, you know, humble beginnings, kind of like the rest of us, and turned into a very powerful music executive. I don't know if he's worth three billion dollars, but between him and Dre and what they built, I mean, that's 
there's, you know, potential and clout there. Whether the Dr. Dre thing, you will know, see how, you know, is he an actual Apple employee or this is sort of like a, uh, was it Alicia Keys, Blackberry type of marketing right. gimmick. Lady Gaga, Polaroid, um, figurehead stuff. Right, but I mean, Alicia Keys was just brought in by Blackberry to, I don't know, stand on stage and, and wave. Dr. Dre is actually part of building this business. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, and also somebody who's tied to the to the record industry. So I think there's the, that connection that, please pardon the cliche, that synergy uh, could actually work for Apple. But, um, you know, there's a reason why we're talking this, we're talking about this, because it's, it is a little bit of a head scratcher. You get $3 billion for this company that nobody ever thought was actually all that great. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how it un unfolds in the next it's, couple of years. It certainly will, or at least, you know, we'll get through next Monday anyway. Dan Rowinski uh, reports. Uh, he's the mobile editor over at Read Write. Thanks so much for joining us, Dan. And let folks know uh, where they can follow your work. Uh, you can go to readwrite.com. I can also be found on Twitter at at Dan underscore Rowinski. Perfect. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, sir. All right. Finally, I mentioned phone tapping and law enforcement. So here's the deal. Researchers from security consultancy SEC Consult, it's the name of the consultancy, have published a report that software that's commonly used by law enforcement to intercept the communications of suspected criminals contains, surprise, critical weaknesses, including an undocumented backdoor secured with a hard-coded password. The researchers recommended not using the Nice Recording Express voice recording package, one of several software offerings provided by Nice Systems. They're based out of Israel. It's a company that provides mission-critical lawful interception solutions to support the fight against organized crime, drug trafficking, and terrorist activities. Those are their words. So not really very good if it's not secure. The advisory warns that critical weaknesses in the software expose users to attacks that compromise investigations and the security of the agency networks. Awesome. Partial fixes for some of the flaws have been released, but SEC Consult still advises consumers not to use the product until a thorough security review has been performed by security professionals and all identified issues have been resolved. And on that happy note, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News Today. That's tomorrow morning and every weekday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.